Shag Harbor is a small fishing village on the east coast of Canada. It is a peaceful place where the locals focus on the sea, not the sky. But in 1967, a dramatic UFO incident upended Shag Harbor's quiet ways. It was October 4th, 1967, when two of the townspeople en route to their homes spotted something strange above the tree line. My friend and I were talking as I was driving, and all of a sudden my friend said, look, look at those lights in the sky. When we first seen them, they looked like they were stopped. Of course, we were driving in the car and we couldn't tell if they were stopped or or if they were moving or what they were. And after we lost sight of it, and we were in around the corner, we gained sight of it for a few more seconds, then we lost sight of it again. I know I was scared when I first got out of the car because I wasn't very long, very long getting into the house like to, to get my father and, and get him to come out and have a look at it. And I was kind of hoping that it would stay there long enough for him to see it, and it did. Smith and Kendrick weren't the only ones to see the strange lights. Many of the locals watched as they flickered off and on. Suddenly, the luminous object turned on its side and plummeted into the harbor waters. Eyewitnesses rushed to notify the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or RCMP. The people who initially arrived on the scene, the civilians who were called in the aid, the RCMP, uh, concerns were for survivors. Most people saw this thing occur from a distance. and. It was initially thought that perhaps it was an airplane crash, but what the eyewitnesses saw, or in this case, what RCMP officers saw when they arrived on the scene, I mean, there were at least three officers on the shoreline that at least saw a pale yellow light moving on the water. They all felt that it was something quite unusual. The RCMP officers were not alone in observing the mysterious object. They were surrounded by a small gathering of spectators. And we all seen it, the police seen it. And everybody was, I guess, startled by it. And nobody had, none of the people that were there had ever seen anything like it before. And I, had, I know I hadn't. The witnesses stood and stared, mesmerized by the strange light on the water. Then, just as suddenly as it had appeared, the light vanished. A Coast Guard cutter was summoned, but local fishermen, already on board their vessels, headed for the spot where the light had last been seen. They were looking for survivors, but the only clue that anything had happened that night was a thick layer of an unknown substance. There was a great bubbly foam, and it was yellow, nothing I had ever seen before. You couldn't smell no odor or anything, and we went about probably three lengths of the boat, and we ran out of it. And we turned around, turned the boat around, and came back into it, and we ran out of it again. The foam, like the lights, eventually disappeared. When it was obvious there was no further sign of distress, the search ended for the evening. By the following morning, the RCMP had already made contact with nearby military bases. They were hoping to find a reasonable explanation for what they'd seen. There was none. This left the small town of Shag Harbor to become big news. It's a headline story throughout the North American press and beyond. And uh, in that, it was said quite clearly there were statements made by uh, personnel at Canadian Forces Headquarters in Ottawa saying that, yes, indeed, we are searching for the crash of what we believe to be an unidentified flying object. This is one of those rare cases where something indeed real has gone into the water, and it's not an aircraft, and it's not space junk. This was a, an official statement. Canadian Armed Forces clearly stated that the object was officially a UFO. But the question of where it went after hitting the water was still a mystery. Canada's Department of National Defense was determined to find out. Military authorities ordered an underwater search. Within hours of the sighting, a Navy diving team was bobbing off the shores of the tiny fishing village, scanning the harbor bottom for debris. Meanwhile, Shag Harbor residents were stunned by what was happening in their small town. Those who had been the first to witness the lights were quickly gaining notoriety. Everybody teased me a lot about seeing Martians and 
all this stuff, but I, I believe I see something. I did see something. There's no question about that. And uh, what it was that, I don't know, but it was something. It was definitely something. The people of Shag Harbor had no expectations. Roswell, although it occurred in 47, uh, did not become, uh, you know, a, a story and a case until al almost into the 80s, at least until 78. And they weren't influenced by that. This uh, Shag Harbor stood alone. Nothing was found during the Navy's three-day vigil. On the 8th of October, the search was canceled. Media interest began to wane, and life in Shag Harbor settled back to normal. But researchers now claim there is more to this incident than originally revealed. 26 years later, the case was re-examined, and unofficial information began to emerge. The men from the original Navy diving team were the first to talk, and what a story they had to tell. These men are claiming uh, that there was a second operation, and their story has been corroborated by other Armed Forces personnel that it, this UFO did not stay in the Shag Harbor area, but got away under the water and went up the coast and came to rest near Government Point. Now, at Government Point, you have a secret base. In those days, it was an American base on Canadian soil. Uh, to have uh, an unidentified craft of any type sitting very near this facility and on some of their detection equipment would be a matter of extreme concern. The Shelbourne military base at Government Point is now closed. But at the time of the sightings, it was a first line of defense against Soviet threats. Here, American forces monitored for submarine activity using a sensitive underwater grid. According to the unofficial story, an object triggered the detection device and a flotilla of Navy vessels responded. From our best information, six to seven ships um, camped over the object for about a week, keeping an eye on it. Divers went down on it. Um, one diver in particular makes no bones about it that uh, this thing was, a, you know, was a, uh, an unidentified flying object and there were things on it. And as the men put it, there was still activity in these crafts. And they're absolutely certain that uh, it was nothing from this earth, that it was a UFO. So uh, this does go beyond the official record by quite a stretch. According to researchers, other eyewitnesses have come forward, making this story difficult to dismiss. So what evidence do we have of this happening? We have... Uh, Three to four people that tell us the story that this did happen. We've got the integrity of the witnesses, but that's, you know, we you, witnesses are, uh, we don't have, we don't have the smoking gun, that's for sure, but I think we got, uh, we probably have the gun, but we just don't have the bullets. The unofficial story may never have confirmation, but it most certainly is complete. There is a beginning, a middle, and according to investigators, a surprising end. One of the things I enjoy most about the story is its end, because I suppose you could say ufologically speaking, it has a happy ending, unlike most of these stories. After these ships sat over this object for a week, uh, the UFOs start moving again while still submerged under the water and move down the coast of Nova Scotia and out into the Gulf of Maine. Once in the Gulf of Maine, they surface and fly away. This was a genuine UFO event, and what does that mean? Yes, it was an unidentified flying object, but beyond that, it means that it's nothing conventional. There are certainly aspects of this that you cannot explain or explain away.